This is a video about how we cremated our cat. If you're squeamish, consider yourself duly warned. So Dan's getting some more sticks for our little <coughs> funeral pyre tonight. The water's finally receding. The water table stayed really high and it's only been down like that for a day or two. So we decided we're going to have our lucky funeral tonight. So, and there's lots of mosquitoes out. So that's awesome. Because of all the water. So anyways, we're going to build this little thing and, um, and say goodbye to the little man. So. Good day to them all. It is a good day to send him off. Someone asked me why it was important to do this now that the ground is unfrozen and we could have simply buried him. I am not sure of all the complexities behind our reasoning. In part, since he left the plane the day after Christmas when the ground was frozen and the snow was deep, it was the initial decision. We planned to burn him at the spring equinox. But the snow was still so deep and heavy, we couldn't shovel a space around the covered fire pit to safely perform the task. And then we had a vacation to visit family, and the time for cremation just kept getting pushed out. I believe it was a combination of many factors, but mostly curiosity about whether we could pull it off without trouble. And we certainly did. That's my baby. I really like this. Oh, stick fell. Be Here goes the fire patrol. Gotta see how close you can get. Oh, God. Yeah, it's hot out there, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> and retreat. <laughs> no, this is really good because this is Lucky 13, my 13th cat. He's my black cat. And we're sending him off with this big fire, and I think it's just really great symbology for where I am right now with my life. Yeah. Starting the planting moon. After we got the fire set up and ready to go, we sat on the porch and burned some sage and said some prayers and remembrances, and basically just sat for an hour or more talking about what a joy Lucky had been in our lives. We remembered all the hard work of hand feeding him and knew we'd done much to make his life easier. We noted his best years were probably the two and a half he spent being spoiled by Grandma Ruth, who fed him soft food every day, multiple times a day, to be sure he was never hungry. We thought back to when he first arrived in our care and the way he sat behind the French doors in the office of our old house in Indiana as Kenya hissed at this newcomer. We reminisced about how he was originally Tommy's cat He'd slept with Tommy throughout Tommy's childhood, and then he became ours when Tommy left for college. We reveled in the fact that he finally became a lap cat late in life, and all the snuggling that we enjoyed, especially in those last few days when he was held almost nonstop. We recalled how he would visit us at night to tuck us into bed before hopping down 10 minutes later to yowl through the house trying to locate Kenya, who roughed him up on a daily, even though he was almost twice her size. We finally smiled as we thought of all the times he meowed us out of bed for his morning feeding. And we comforted ourselves thinking of the hours of sleeping three across in the big king size bed, all of us under the covers with our heads out the top of the sheet. Unless it was a cold night and Lucky had decided to just curl up completely under cover, soaking in our warmth. If you'd like to read more about this experience, please feel free to go over to the blog. It's linked below. Here goes a lucky man. And this is how far back you have to stand. <laughs> it's really hot. I'm actually getting too hot. <laughs> Look, I am backed up into the lilies and retreating. On to new adventures, new worlds.